The Cost of Freedom is Paid in Blood. I'm Nate, and today let's look at Bad Batch Season 2, Episode 15 and 16, The Summit, and Plan 99. In this episode, the guys in Omega head to Iriadu, where Tarkin is holding a summit that Hemlock is supposed to attend. Their plan to track Hemlock's ship hits a snag when another group shows up with plans to destroy the compound. Written by Matt Michnovitz and Jennifer Corbett, Episodes 15 and 16 were released on March 29, 2023 on Disney+. The episode starts on Pabu, where the guys in Echo try to find intel on Hemlock, so they can hunt down and save Crosshair. In the first episode, we identified freedom as a theme of the season. Along the way, we got repeated reminders that the guys in Omega were on a path to get Crosshair back and save their brother clones. At stake was Crosshair's freedom, as well as that of their brother clones. Crosshair overall represented the struggle of the clones to gain their freedom. Under the Republic, they experienced freedom, but the Empire is swiftly changing that. For a good amount of time, Admiral Rampart was the tip of the spear of oppression, but since his removal, Dr. Hemlock and his overlord, Tarkin, have filled that gap. Throughout history, freedom has been sought by many, but the only way it has ever been gained and held is by sacrifice and spilled blood. Anyone who has been to war gets this, and so do the clones. Echo gets a tip that Hemlock will be attending a summit on Iriadu with Tarkin, and he figures that would be the best time to track Hemlock when he leaves to find out where his base is. Hunter sees it as a serious risk, but Tech chimes in that Crosshair is their brother and they don't leave their brothers behind. Infiltration of Tarkin's mountaintop compound requires the guys to hitch a ride on the tram system. Once inside, they make good movement on tagging Hemlock's ship, but a snag arises. Saw Guerrera and his team of freedom fighters have also infiltrated the compound with the intention of blowing it up, which will put a stop to tracking Hemlock. Saw Guerrera doesn't care though, and here we get some fantastic writing. It's what is called four-corner opposition. Not only do we have the opposing sides of good versus evil, but we have opposing sides within the good side and the bad side. We have the Batch and Guerrera, and we have Tarkin and Hemlock. Though the Imperial side is more aligned, there is still conflict that generates interest for us. The summit meeting isn't all sparkles and rainbows. Hemlock's experiments are concerning for the other members, and Tarkin wants to know more. And then there is conflict over the clones. Some of the officers had good experiences with them during the war, but Tarkin doesn't see them in the same light. To him, they showed startling signs of individuality, which is not conducive to running a government like the Empire. The guys didn't have any problems getting into the compound or doing what they needed to do. It wasn't easy, but they pulled it off. The Empire becomes aware of Saw Gerrera because he disabled several security cameras. The compound is put on security alert, and soon everyone is on the run. The guys in Omega head back to the tram while Saw and his team escape on one of the shuttles. But the Empire is onto the guys and cuts the power to the tram system. Tarkin orders his TIE interceptors to launch and shoot the tram down, despite hesitation from his officers that their own stormtroopers will be caught in the crossfire. But Tarkin doesn't care. With the homing beacon on Hemlock's ship destroyed in the blast from Saw Gerrera's destruction, and the guys dangling for their lives a few miles above the surface of the planet, we head into the final episode. TIE interceptors show up and damage the tram cars the guys in Omega are in. Echo can't get the power back up, so Tech climbs up the track to the nearest tower to shortcut the system and get it back online, which he does. But the damage from the TIE interceptors is too much for the tram to regain traction. As Tech dangles, he tries to get back on board, but he knows it is useless. Either they all die, or he sacrifices himself by cutting away the part of the tram he is dangling from. In an epic moment where Wrecker orders Tech to get back on board, Tech replies, Plan 99, and then, when have we ever followed orders? He then shoots the last remaining link, holding his part of the tram up, and falls to his death. The other part of the tram resets itself on the track and sends the guys and Omega hurling towards the station. They crash through the station and nearly get killed. Omega is badly hurt and the guys rush her to Ord Mantel where AZ-3 attends to her and the guys. There has been much talk online about whether Tech is really dead. I'll admit that the moment stunned me. I never thought Dave Filoni would go as far as kill off one of the major characters this soon. But it makes sense. The guys are on a path to save their brother clones. Their overall mission is honorable. And with the theme of the season being freedom, how could someone not die? I don't think that Tech is coming back. I think the show would lose credibility if he did. I think that the show is going to end with Omega being the lone survivor of the batch. One by one, the guys are going to fall. One of the major themes of the show, in general, is sacrifice, and it was clear from the very beginning that the guys made a choice for Omega over just saving themselves. 
Their overall mission is to save their brother clones, but I think ultimately it's going to be Omega who will live to accomplish that end or to help Rex accomplish that end. Omega wakes up several days later with Hunter by her side. She tries to convince him that they need to go after Tech, but Hunter knows that he is dead. They'd only be putting themselves in more danger. He tells her that it's time they settled down somewhere, and he asks if she would like to go back to Pabu, which she says yes. Out in the bar area, Wrecker is despondent. Sid tries to cheer him up, but she is struggling with something. She told the Empire about them, and soon Hemlock and the squad of clone commandos show up to take them away. Hunter sends Omega down the trap door in Sid's office while he goes to confront Hemlock. In the bar, Hemlock pays Sid in front of Hunter and Wrecker, who has been apprehended. Most of us suspected that Sid would do this by the end of the season, so this is no surprise. Hemlock hands Hunter Tex goggles. Omega, being a true squad mate, did not escape like Hunter wanted her to, and she watches from a vent. Soon the entire city is crawling with Imperial troops. Hemlock escorts Hunter and Wrecker with a squad of clone commandos. Omega shows up to fight for the guys, but she is quickly stunned and captured by Hemlock. Echo shows up and commandeers an ATST walker. He and AZ-3 free Hunter and Wrecker, but it's too late to rescue Omega. Hemlock escapes the planet with Omega, and Hunter, Wrecker, Echo, and AZ get to the Marauder and escape into hyperspace. On Tantus, Omega is brought to a handcuffed Nilase. Hemlock tells her that he has brought Omega to her, and he hopes now she will comply with his wishes to continue her research. Omega is taken off to a lab room where we can see several clones unconscious on tables along with several cloning tubes with things in them. Omega notices Crosshair on one of the tables and tries to wake him. Emery Carr approaches Omega and she says she wants to talk to Nelose. Emery states that it's ironic she wants to talk to a Kaminoan and not her. Omega then responds that she doesn't know Emery, to which Emery reveals that she and Omega are sisters. It was pretty obvious from the first time we met Emery that she was a clone so this was no surprise, but we are still left wondering what Emery's background is and whether she is good or not. I think that Emery is going to be the replacement for Tech. She's got the goggles and clearly has the smarts. In episode 14, we saw some signs that she did not like the way Hemlock was torturing Crosshair. As a clone, she's in a tough spot. She either helps Hemlock or ends up being experimented on like Crosshair. In the end though, as a clone, her trajectory is going towards being experimented on. She will have to make a decision at some point. Overall, I thought this season ended in a grand fashion. I'm sad that we lost Tech and going forward it won't be the same. But the season ended on a cliffhanger and Season 3 will no doubt see Crosshair rejoining the Batch as well as the guys in Omega accepting Emery Carr to their ranks. I also think that Rex will become a major player and I think the guys are going to be directly seeking a resolution to the overall mission of saving their brother clones. Even more than that though, I think there will also be a byline that addresses their relationship with the Jedi. We had Gunji this season, but if you'll remember in the first episode of the series, a young Kanan Jarrus runs from the guys. In episode 3 of this season, The Solitary Clone, Cody states that many of the clones are questioning their orders concerning the Jedi. This question will not be left hanging, which leaves us wondering, which Jedi will we see next season? Let me know what you all think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content and the deeper discussion into the themes found in Star Wars, please hit the like button and subscribe to keep me in your feed.